Shalom, my Israelite brothers and sisters. So first of all, all praises to our Elohim and to his only begotten son, Yehoshua. So this lesson is going to be on keeping the Shabbat. I've been getting a lot of good questions from a lot of you new believers who are just waking up in the faith on how to keep the Shabbat. When does it start? What can we do? What can we not do? And those are all very good questions. So the Most High has inspired me to do this lesson on the Shabbat. And we're going to cover quite a few things. But the whole goal here is to give you a really good general idea on where to start. But brothers and sisters, and especially those of you who are just recently waking up in this faith, it's going to be up to you to take this study even further and research it for yourselves. But you're going to find that keeping the Shabbat is very enjoyable. Now, I'm going to also use my experience as well, too, because, brothers and sisters, I have been observing the Shabbat for almost 30 years now. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's enjoyable every time I honor it. And it never gets old. Now, there are three very special things that Elohim did to the Sabbath that he did to no other day. And, you know, many people miss that part, too. So I'm going to share that with you here in a minute. But just being able to honor the Sabbath, brothers and sisters, is a great joy and honor. And, you know, we, we know that all of Yah's laws are not grievous. And if the most high laws ever become grievous to any of you, then you're keeping them for the wrong reason. The laws were never meant to keep us in bondage. The laws were always meant to set us apart from the other nations. That's, that's what makes us special, brothers and sisters, because we are a set-apart people. And these laws were for us, for our enjoyment, for remembrance throughout our generations forever. That's why I always get excited about the weekly Shabbat. You know, and I'd be like, man, I don't I don't want it to be I don't want it to end. You know, I can't wait till it comes. It can't come fast enough. But we're going to get into some scriptures that I'm going to show you how important it is and why we really need to be observing the Shabbat. So let's go ahead and get to the meat of the Sabbath. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8 and 9. Now, this is the fourth commandment. And I want you to pay close attention to verse 8 because it's going to start off with remember. There's a reason why the Most High says remember. It is the only commandment that has remember before it. So let's read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. All right, we're going to break, this ver we're going to break these scriptures down verse by verse. So let's deal with verses 8 and 9. So it says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, why did the Most High put remember? Because he knew it would, it would come a time where we would forget. Because when our forefathers went into slavery, especially the Atlantic slave trade, you know, when the yokes of iron came off our forefathers' neck, we were destroyed as a people completely. And then recently, the Most High is waking his people up, you know, and we're getting back to Torah. That's why the law seems like a strange thing to us, because... We've never understood it because we were so destroyed in our heritage. Our identity was hidden from us. So now we, we're having to almost like starting back over again, getting them back into these laws. So the Most High says, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Then it goes on to say in verse 9, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. All right, let's talk about this last part of the verse. Thou shalt labor and do all thy work. So in other words, you got six days to do what you got to do. Whatever business you got to conduct, get it done in six days. But on the seventh day, which is the Shabbat, we must rest from our labors. Now, here's where the problem lies with some of us. Now, we're in the land of our captivities. We got to understand that and make that very plain because I know some of the questions people ask me, if I can't get the Shabbat off on my job, will I, will I be held responsible? And the answer to that question is no, because we are in the land of our captivity. And that's why I'm going to share with you 
towards the middle of the lesson, once we get into the lesson, I'm going to share with you how to keep the Shabbat, even if you have to, or if you get called in to work, or if you have to work, I'm going to tell you the best way to keep the Shabbat on your job. And I'm going to use my experience on how the Most High dealt with me and taught me some things on how to keep the Shabbat at times when I had to get called in on the Shabbat on my job. Now, if you can get the Shabbat off, all praises to the Most High. You know, some of you may be doctors, lawyers, whatever you, you know, you schedule your own hours and that's all good. But not everybody can get the Shabbat off. And, you know, it's a very messed up situation, brothers and sisters. I mean, we live, I mean, it's, it's all jacked up, you know, because of the sins of our forefathers. This is where we're at. And, you know, we have to make the best of it. That's why we, we can only keep the laws the, to the best to our abilities. But we're going to talk more about this. We're going to talk more uh, about the things that you should do and shouldn't do while you're on your job on the Shabbat. But I want to continue um, covering this verse in the next next few verses. So let's go ahead and continue. Let's jump down to verse 10. It says, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Now, back in the good old days when King David was ruling, back in them days when we was kings, you know, we had servants, we had all kind of land and cattle. That means that everybody in our, in our household honored the Shabbat. They did not work. So that means that everybody within your household, you know, fast forward today, your family members, your children, means that they need anybody in your house need to be observing the Sabbath. Now, what if you're living with someone, let's say you're living with your parents and they don't know anything about the Shabbat. They don't keep the laws at all. Well, what can I do to keep the Shabbat? Because I don't want to get kicked out. And, you know, you don't want to cause yourself to get kicked out because, you know, I have a lot of teenagers who watch the lessons as well, too. But they're having trouble trying to keep the Shabbat because of their parents. Well, you can only keep it the best way you can. And that's what you got to do. And we're going to talk more about that as well later. But always keep the Shabbat the best way you can. I know a lot of us are in certain situations where it's really hard for a lot of you to keep the Shabbat. You know, and that's why the Most High is awakening his, his people up. And it's going to be over soon, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, things are happening so fast on this earth. The shift change is getting ready to take place. The Most High is getting ready to elevate his people back to their position. You know, and we don't we don't have long, but we have to deal with these crazy family members sometimes, you know. And I know it gets frustrating. Let's jump down to verse 11. And I want you to really pay attention to this verse because we're going to talk about those three things that the Most High did to the Shabbat that he did to no other days. For in six days Elohim made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Elohim blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. So let's talk about these three things. So first... The Most High rested on the Shabbat day, not because he was tired or exhausted. You know, the Most High is powerful. He doesn't get tired. It was because he wanted to set an example for his people throughout their generations to rest from their labels, from the rest of, from their labors. So resting on the Sabbath is resting not only from your physical labors, brothers and sisters, but it's resting from your mental labors as well too because when you working out throughout the week it gets hectic sometimes you know you you need a break and do you know that it's scientifically proven that people who take one day out of seven to rest are more healthier than people who work constantly 24 7 is constantly all week long seven days out the week so the most high put a day aside for us to rest from our physical labors as well as our mental labors, our spiritual labors. 
you know. So it's 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 to it's to set aside where we can just really honor and be relieved from the pressures of this world. So the next thing the Most High did to the Shabbat day that he did to no other day was he blessed it. He put his seal upon the Shabbat that would last forever and ever. It would never be broken. So the Most High put his seal upon the Shabbat day by blessing it. And then finally, he hollowed it. Now, hollowed is the same word as sanctified. Sanctified means to be set aside for a holy purpose. That's what sanctified means. So he sanctified it that he put it aside for a holy purpose. That's why the Shabbat is very special. And we're going to talk about more um, in the future because I want to start doing some lessons on the high holy days as well, too. Because anytime we start a high holy day, it always starts as a Sabbath, as a Shabbat. So if y'all is willing, we'll see some future lessons on some high holy days. But as far as sanctified, you know, the Most High has sanctified us too. He set us aside for a holy purpose. That's why it says in Deuteronomy 7, 6, that we are a peculiar people. We are a set apart people above all nations. And that's something to rejoice about. All right, let's go back to verse 11. For in six days, Elohim made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore Elohim blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. So there you have it. The three things that the Most High did to the Shabbat that he did to no other days. He blessed, he rested, he blessed it, and he sanctified it. Let's go over to Exodus chapter 31, and we're going to read verses 16 and 17. We're going to see how long the Shabbat is supposed to last. All right, starting with verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. Read that part again. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. That means forever, brothers and sisters. Perpetual means never ending. Verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Notice it didn't say it is a sign between me and the heathen nations. It says that it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Elohim made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. This is for us, brothers and sisters. It is for the chosen people of the Most High Yah. You see, Elohim's laws were not given to the other nations. They were given to us. That's why we must obey Yah's commandment statutes and laws. All right, let's get another scripture because I want to show you that the Most High Sabbath is going to last forever. Let's go to Isaiah 66, verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Elohim. So that means that, brothers and sisters, when the Most High puts us back in our right position, we're going to continue to keep these laws, commandments, and statutes. And guess what? Our servants that are going to be serving us, you best believe they're going to be keeping the Shabbat as well, too. And if they don't, they're going to be destroyed. So we're going to, we're going to continue this throughout eternity. That's why I said in one of my lessons that, the, that Yah's laws, commandments, and statutes is the very heartbeat of Elohim. You cannot change it. It cannot be ob obliterated. It cannot be wiped out. All right, let's talk about when the Shabbat begins because that's the question I get sometimes. How do we know when the, when the Shabbat starts? Well, we're going to let the scriptures tell us when the Shabbat starts. So let's go to Leviticus chapter 23 and we're going to read verse 32. And it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest 
and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath, anytime the, the word of the Most High is referencing the Sabbath, especially at the beginning of a high holy day, because it always starts off as a Sabbath. So, it's from even unto even. So, some brews have debated that sunset is when the Shabbat starts, and some brews argue that it's when the sun is actually all the way set and you, you don't see any light in the horizon. But according to the scriptures, brothers and sisters, if you look up the Greek word, the Hebrew words for this, it's when the sun sets. So in other words, when that, when that sun hits over that horizon, the Shabbat has begun. Now, this shouldn't be an argument or a debate because I'm going to tell you why. If you're still scrambling by this time to get ready for the Shabbat, then you might as well not even keep it because even before the sun hits that horizon, we should already be prepared for the Shabbat, brothers and sisters. It shouldn't be a matter of scrambling or whatever. You know, we're going to talk about preparing before the Shabbat. Now, saints, we should at least be three hours prepared before the Shabbat starts, you know, and... You know, by this time, you know, our mind should already be in that spirit of the Shabbat. You know, and I know some people, they kind of get scrambled up. You know, they're, they're depending on that. I mean, they're doing things at the last minute, just scrambling. Oh, I got to get this done before the sun sets. I got to do this. And if you're doing all that, then you I mean, it's all in vain. You know, we should be in the spirit of rest at least three hours before the Shabbat sets. You should have all your things done, whatever you needed to iron during out the week, you know, have it done. And it's going to come with time, you know, especially for those of you who are just waking up in the faith. You know, there's going to be some learning curves. and But, you know, the more we start practicing these set-apart righteous acts, the better we're going to get at them. So that's why we must do the best we can to keep these laws, commandments, and statutes. So let's talk about the preparation before the Shabbat. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about and discuss the preparation before the weekly Shabbat starts. So let's go to Luke chapter 23 and verse 54. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. Now, throughout our generations, brothers, such as our forefathers always prepared before the Shabbat drew on. Always. Never fail. And we are to continue that to this very day. So what we call Friday would be the preparation day. That's the day before the Shabbat. So whatever you need to get done before the Shabbat draws on, whether it's ironing your clothes, washing your car, all your secular business, anything that you got to get taken care of, you know, that's, that's the really, that's the crunch time to really do it. And I mean, we have all week, of course. But that Friday is technically the day where we should pretty much be winding down and getting our minds into the spirit of the Shabbat. So in that way, once we have that preparation done, you know, we cook our meals, make, make that extra meal for the Sabbath because that's what, they, that's what our forefathers did. They cooked extra on that, on that Friday to have enough for the Shabbat because, you know, no cooking was allowed. On the Shabbat and we're going to talk about that as well too. Now before we continue I want to go back to the work thing because we talked about earlier that someone asked a question if I cannot get the Shabbat off from my job will the Most High hold me responsible and I said the answer to that question is no because we are in the land of our captivity brothers and sisters. So the Most High understands and you can't quit your job because you got to feed your family. You know, and that's important because the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 3.10, if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat either. So you have to use common sense, brothers and sisters, because I've seen some people where they would just quit their jobs if they couldn't get the Shabbat off and, you know, wind up in some very hardcore financial difficulties. And that's not what the Most High would want. 
So we, 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 we have to use common sense when we're dealing with these kind of things. Now, let me tell you what you can do. Now, as far as keeping the Shabbat on your job, you know, don't use money for exchange of anything, you know, because we don't buy or sell on the Sabbath. Instead, bring your lunch and the work with you. That's how you can honor the Sabbath on your job. Refrain from any conversations that are secular unless it's job related. But outside of that, try to avoid any uh, secular conversations with your employer, employees, you know, because you want to try to keep it the best way you can. Constantly keep scriptures on your mind, even at your job, if you have to work on the Shabbat. You know, think on those things that are wholly spiritual. So, you know, you just, you have to be creative and find ways to keep it the best way you can, even on your job. Now, some of you may be military. Some of you are probably reserves where you have to go in on the weekends sometimes, you know. But you, you just, you have to continue to keep that mindset of the Shabbat on your mind while you're at the job. But just refrain from any secular conversations. And that's how you keep the Shabbat even on your job. And like I said earlier, it's, it's messed up. You know, everything is jacked up. But don't worry, brothers and sisters. Our our time is next. And we're not going to never have to worry about someone telling us to come into work. You know, we're not going to have to worry about none of that. We're not going to have to worry about the pressures on us. You know, that's why we're in captivity. We're still under our slave masters. So, but that doesn't give us a reason to break the Sabbath. Just because, just because of that, that doesn't mean that we just put the Shabbat aside and don't keep it at all, you know. And if you can get the Shabbat off from your jobs, all praises to the Most High. But a lot of us are not that fortunate, so we have to do the best we can with that. Now, this situation I'm getting ready to discuss is going to be for my, for my young Hebrew teenagers. Now, let's say your mother and your father or your mother, whoever you're living with, are not awoken in this truth. And as a matter of fact, they hate the fact that you're obeying or you're trying to obey the laws, commandments, and statutes the best way you can. So let's say your mother or your dad tells you to cut the grass and it's the Shabbat. And you really want to obey the Most High. What do I do? What do I tell my parents? Well, first of all, let me give you a scripture. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Children, obey your parents and Elohim, for this is right. Now, some people read this and they get a misunderstanding about this. Let me tell you what it means. So, anything that your parents ask you to do, as long as it's in line with the word of the Most High, then yes, you obey them. But if it's not, for example, if they're asking you to cut the grass and it's the Shabbat, you must explain to them the best way you can why. Now, this is a tough situation because, you know, I don't want to get a lot of these young Hebrew teenagers in trouble, but you got to use wisdom with this as well, too. So if your parents ask you to cut the grass and it's the Shabbat and you're in between a rock and a hard place, the best thing you do is this. Explain to your parents why the Shabbat is so important, why you shouldn't be cutting grass on a Shabbat and you just got to trust in Elohim that he's going to convince your parents to avoid letting you cut in the grass on a Shabbat. Now again, I say it's a tough situation because I've seen, I've dealt with teenagers who's been in that situation and that's why I'm addressing this. And uh, it's, it's hard brothers and sisters. Uh, this, this walk is not easy. So we must obey the most high first, even if it cost us some great tensions, you know, and I said it, you know, and I'm willing to be held responsible for that, but it's better to, it's better to obey the most high than man. So if your parents are telling you to do something that's contrary to what the most high is telling, telling you, then you have every right to disobey that direct order because you want to obey the most high first. But do it with wisdom, though. You know, don't don't go telling your parents, you know, forget that. I'm not doing that. You know, you don't want to do that. And plus, you know, we as 
Israelites, we don't talk that way to our parents anyway, you know, because we get knocked upside the head. But just use tact and wisdom and really pray to the Most High to give you the words to say, you know, to your parents if you're in that situation. All right, so let's go ahead and start discussing what we should do on the Shabbat and what we should not do on the Shabbat. So some of you guys see this picture right here. It's an old wood stove. Now, I'm old school. Now, I grew up with one of these things because, you know, my grandmother, she used to cook our meals on one of these things. And just like you see that pot on top of that wood stove heater, that's the same way that my grandmother used to do. She used to make us breakfast and everything. So, see, some of you catch, y'all don't, don't know anything about that. Y'all young. You know, the only thing y'all know is the microwaves. But y'all don't know nothing about this. This old school right here. So, those of you who are over the age of 45 or 40, you know where I'm coming from on this. But anyway, what I want to get to is just talking about some of the things that we should not do. So let's go to Exodus chapter 35, and we're going to read verse 3. And it says, Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So that means your stove, whatever you cook with. Now, on the Shabbat, I don't use my stove at all because what I do is um, I just make sandwiches. You know, I get all my stuff I need to get during the week and just prepare things without cooking because there's some there's a lot of things that you can prepare without having to cook it. So that's what it means when it says you should not kindle no fire throughout your habitations because our forefathers, they use stuff like this. They use wood stove they used to cook their meals. Now, I've had some Hebrews that even asked me, says, well, what about running the heater um, on this on the Shabbat? Now, again, brothers and sisters, you got to use common sense because you don't want to freeze out your family and it's cold. and You got the heater off. That's not what this is talking about. You know, the Bible says it's better to do good on the Shabbat day than to do evil. So, you know, if you got to, you know, that's not talking about your heater. You know, you got to keep warm so you can honor the Shabbat day. But this is in reference to your stove because if you do a research on this throughout the scriptures, you know, the Israelites did not cook on the Shabbat. You know, they prepared the preparation day, which was Friday. They already made things ready for the Shabbat. So when the Shabbat came, they didn't have to do any cooking. They didn't have to light their stoves or kindle any fires to light their stoves. So that's what this is talking about. So we shouldn't be cooking on the Shabbat, brothers and sisters, at all. So another thing we should not be doing on the Shabbat is buying or selling. So let's go over to Nehemiah chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or if any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we should not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and that we should leave the seventh year and the exaction exaction of every debt. So, you know, our forefathers, they never bought or sold on a Sabbath or dealt with any kind of transaction dealing with uh, money. So this is very important to us. And even this present day, you know, we don't buy or sell on the Sabbath. But, you know, whenever our wicked forefathers would break y'all's laws, they would start selling and, and buying on the Sabbath. You know, it's just like if you read throughout the Bible, they were supposed to let the land rest every seven years. Every seven years, the land was supposed to rest for a year. But, you know, our forefathers, they continue to do transaction business, and, you know, and they did this for 70 years without letting the land rest. And that's why they went into slavery, the Babylonian captivity for all that time, you know. So, you know, the Most High takes this serious. And, you know, this is a, just another way to refrain from conducting business on a Shabbat because the Shabbat is all about the Most High. You know, we're going to take that day and just really meditate on Him because that's what it's all about. All right, saints, let's go ahead and recap. So we talked about three main things we shouldn't be doing on the Shabbat. That's working if you can help it. Like I said earlier, we already explained that we're in the land of our captivities and not all of us can get the Shabbat off. So, but you keep the Shabbat the best way you can on your job. Definitely buying and selling. You know, that's that's a no-go. 
And even if you have to get caught on your job, you can bring your lunch and the work with you. You don't have to go to the store or anything like that to buy your food. And then cooking on the Sabbath is a no-go. We shouldn't be cooking on the Sabbath. Now, let me throw a little wrench in here so because I know I'll probably get some questions about this. So let's say your child comes down with something and it's the Shabbat. And I mean, it's bad, too. And you really need to get some medication for your children. Now you're thinking to yourself, will I break the Sabbath if I go get medication for my sick child? And the answer to that is no, because the Bible says that it's good to do good on the Sabbath than to do evil. So if you come into an emergency situation where your child, your baby gets very sick and it's the Shabbat, and the only way to ease that pain is that you have to go to one of these drugstores and get some medication, then you got to do what you got to do. The Most High understands. You know, don't let your child end up dying because you failed to get that child what he needed or what she needed in order to ease the pain. And some Hebrews make that mistake. You know, we've actually we've actually had some, um, I think, some incidents where a couple of Hebrews in that same situation where they didn't want to do anything. I guess it was the Shabbat, and something happened to the child. I don't think the child died, but you know they. Child Protective Services came in and they dealt with it and everything and took the children away and put the parents in jail. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. You got to be careful because you got these heathens that already hate us, you know, and they're looking at any excuse to put us away. So, again, brothers, and sisters, just use common sense. You know, um, if your baby needs some medication, it's the Shabbat, and your baby is sick, then you got to go to the drugstore and get that medication. But at all costs, Avoid working, buying and selling, and cooking on the Sabbath day. Why well, I should say Shabbat. So let's go to Mark chapter 2 and verse 27. We're going to start getting into the things that we need to be doing and focusing on on the Shabbat. So it says, verse 27, And he said unto them, The Shabbat was made for man and not man for the Shabbat. So in other words, we have no right to just do our own thing on a Shabbat day. You know, it was given to man. It was given to his people so that we could set aside and rest from our physical and mental labors. You know, but the heathens came along. They got a hold to our scriptures. They said, we no longer have to keep the Shabbat. Oh, now you got to keep Sunday. You know, they came and changed a lot of things. And that's why the Most High is getting ready to destroy these heathen nations for what they've done. And the Most High is going to restore the Shabbat in its fullness. And you know what, brothers and sisters? The heathen nations that's going to be our servant, they're going to have to bow down to our feet. And you best believe they're going to be keeping the Shabbat too because we're going to make them keep the Shabbat. And if they don't, it's going to be trouble in the camp. So that's why I can't wait till the Most High comes and destroy these wicked nations and return us to our rightful estate but it's coming. We just got to keep on pressing forward, brothers and sisters, doing our best, doing our best to keep these laws, commandments, and statutes. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 13. We want to get some more guidelines on what we need to be doing on the day of the Shabbat. So 58, Isaiah 58, 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Shabbat, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Shabbat a delight, the holy of the Elohim honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasures, nor speaking thy own words. So this is very important, brothers and sisters. So the Most High is letting us know that we should not be doing our own ways, nor finding our own pleasures, nor speaking thine own words. So what does all this consist of? So let me give you some let me give you, give you some examples. Now somebody may ask, well, can I watch the football game on the Shabbat? Can I watch movies on the Shabbat? The answer to that question is no, because we should abstain from any secular activities. You know, football has nothing to do with the most high. You know, a lot of these movies don't have anything to do with the most high. Now, I'm not saying you can't watch TV because there are a lot of things that you can watch that have that have a lot to do with the most high. You know, a lot of people 
a lot of Hebrews use that time, this time to go on YouTube or whatever and study lessons with their families, things like that. That's perfectly fine. You know, it just has to be in tune with the word of the most high. And that's how you determine, you know, what you can do and what you can't do. And a lot of it is just common sense as well, too. I mean, you know, we all know right from wrong, brothers and sisters. You know, you got some people who just really get anal in detail, you know. But the most, the word of the most high is clear. So if you want to watch something or a movie that has something to do or, or any content that's glorified, that's glorifying the most high, then it's perfectly fine. You're within the scriptures of keeping the Shabbat. So that's you know, what I want to bring out to you. So... You know, but there are a lot of things we can do. We can get out in nature. You know, you can go for walks with your family. You can have a service, a Shabbat service with your families in the park if it's not too cold or if it's not too hot. Hot. You know, like I said earlier, you just got to be creative. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. Now, I know me particular, uh, particularly, I like to light my menorah uh, right before the Shabbat draws on. You know, and I, I like that thing every week and of course I light it for the high holy days as well too so brothers and sisters the Shabbat should be a delight it shouldn't be grievous it shouldn't be burdensome at all you know if you're doing it right if you're honoring the Shabbat the right way it's going to be enjoyable for you and your family members now I'm going to give you a super duper good guideline to go by so you can use this as a guideline to determine if you're truly keeping this Shabbat the right way. And I'm telling you, this is one of the best verses I use too, because you can compare it uh, against what you're doing. So to make sure that you're on the right track and relate it to the Shabbat. So let's go to Philippians chapter four and verse eight. And here we go. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, this is a really good guideline to go by when you're keeping the Shabbat, brothers and sisters. Now, you got some brews, I mean, they won't do anything on the Shabbat. They won't turn on the lights, nothing, you know, and that's ridiculous, you know. And like I said earlier, we got to use common sense, you know, and the, and the Sabbath should not be burdensome. Remember, we just read in uh, Isaiah 58, you know, the, the Shabbat is a delight. It shouldn't be a burdensome. If it becomes a burdensome to you, then you're doing something wrong. You know, you, you're, you're doing something that is causing the Shabbat to be burdensome. And it's, and it's not supposed to be burdensome. It's supposed to be an enjoyment, a great, a, the greatest delight that we have to look for forward to all week. So maybe one hour before the Shabbat comes in, get you and your family, get that shofar out, blow that thing like you've never blown it before to bring in the Shabbat, light that menorah, have a little family time, a little family Bible study. You know, I know I know quite a few families that do that, you know, to bring in the Shabbat. You know, I do it all the time. And I always look forward to the sh uh, weekly Shabbat every week, brothers and sisters never fail all right let's go to first john chapter 5 and we're going to look at verse 3 it says for this is the love of elohim that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous what does grievous means brothers and sisters it means they're not hard they're easy enjoyable a pleasure a delight that's the Shabbat, brothers and sisters. That's what it's for. It's for us to remember and to honor the Most High and put aside our physical, mental, and spiritual labors so that we can be refreshed, you know? And that's what it's all about. You know, and there's all kinds of ways that you can be creative on the Shabbat, you know, I gave you some of my ideas and what I'd like to do. And, you know, the sky's the limits. You know, you can do all kinds of things and being creative and keeping the Shabbat to make it really, really enjoyable for you and your family. 
Now, I get it. There's a lot of us who maybe don't have families. You may be single. You don't have no kids. You know, you still can be creative. You know, you still can do things to make this to make the Shabbat very enjoyable with just you and and the spirit of the Most High. But you're not alone. You know, a lot of us are in the same boat. So, brothers and sisters, I really pray by now that you have a very good idea of what you should be doing and not be doing on the Holy Shabbat. And, you know, go back and study the video. If you're still not clear, you know, don't let it stop here. Continue to take it further. Continue to research this. You know, the word of the Most High is infinite, you know, and we're going to be studying the word of the Most High throughout eternity. It's never going to end, brothers and sisters, because that's just how infinite the word of the Most High is. So with that being said, I want to leave you at Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the faith of Yehoshua. And I pray that you were edified. And it's always an honor to serve my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters scattered to the four corners of the earth. So I say shalom and stay strong.